Today we're making an animated YouTube intro in DaVinci Resolve, and even if you don't know that much about DaVinci Resolve and the graphics and all those things, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be easy. We're gonna do it together. Imagine with me for a minute that your name is not whatever your name is. Your name is Paul Landenson. <laughs> Paul, Paul Landenson. If your name actually is Paul Landenson, this is gonna be the single most convenient video I have ever shown. <laughs> and let's say you have a YouTube video where you go over photography and stuff like that. Well, let's make a little bumper for your YouTube videos. To start out with, let's just make a new timeline. I'm just gonna right click and say, create new timeline here, and we'll call it what YouTube intro, great. Now let's take our logo. And by the way, if you wanna follow along with the exact media, that I'm using. All you have to do is click up there or down there in the description. That'll give you access to our media vault where you can download the images that I'm using as well as a whole bunch of other practice media that we've covered in YouTube videos of times past. Anyway, once you download that, you'll have a couple of pieces of media here. You'll have ocean.mp4, oh baby. You'll have paulllogo.png and paulllogo with alpha png, oh boy. We're gonna use this paulllogoalpha.png and we're just gonna put it over this ocean.mp4. Let's just make this, I don't know, like four seconds long, all right? All I'm doing is just grabbing this ocean video, throwing it into the timeline and just trimming it to be four seconds long like this, okay? Yeah, four seconds of ocean. Then you can take this logo and just put it over it on that second layer there. We got a little uh, little bumper there. Now, I would recommend just for design goodness to make your logo a lot smaller. This is a quick hack to make things look a little bit higher end, a little bit fancier, is you make the logo smaller. So let's select this and you can go to the transform controls here in the inspector and take this down and just zoom it down like that. Yeah, do, do zoom it down, just zoom it down a little bit like that. Take the position, maybe move that down so it's centered. Paul Landenson, good job, Paul. He must take pictures of oceans. That's the big thing I wanna tell you first of all is that you don't need to make a super complicated YouTube intro. It can be very simple like this. In fact, a lot of viewers like it when you have a very quick logo. You don't need to go into a 30 second title sequence for every video. You'll notice how I didn't have one at the start of this video. Keep it tasteful, keep it subtle here, okay? So this is like level one. Put some stuff together and guess what? This is, this is an intro. What if we wanna make this just a little bit fancier? One thing we could do would just be to go into the color page just by clicking on this button down here, switching into the color page and selecting the ocean clip here. And then I have my color correction tools down here and I can maybe just take the mid-tones down on this curve. See, that looks cool. And then I'll just switch back, so easy. Now this is a nice little high-end kind of looking thing. It almost looks like a perfume commercial, you know? It's high-end. So this is great, let's make it just a little bit fancier. If you go up to the upper left, there is a panel called Effects, and you can put all kinds of effects just on this image or on this footage. Let's just go to Open Effects and grab something like, oh, I don't know, how about Radial Blur? Look at that, that looks so cool. We can just add, look at this. Dude, this is so easy to do this. And look how cool that looks. You do this, just animate that. That looks so sick. It looks like you did a bunch of work and you didn't, look at that. Dude, that looks so cool. Just a little bit of blur, I love that. So easy. All right, let's take that blur off. Let's do something else. Oh, something like lens reflections. Sure, look at that. That looks so sick. And it's like two layers with one effect on it, you know? We could also do something like for this logo, we could go to the video transitions and do something like, I don't know, how about these shape triangle left? Let's go with that. And now this kind of wipes it on like that. Still nice and subtle, still really classy, but there's a little bit of animation there. Okay, if you just want something that looks good, looks nice, do something like this. You just throw that logo on top of nice piece of footage like this. Maybe it's, if you do photography, maybe it's a photo that you shot. Maybe it's a video that you shot. Maybe it's stock footage. But this kind of thing goes a long way. And I promise you, this sort of intro is much more respected and you will look far more professional doing this than having a 3D logo spinning for 10 seconds with explosions behind it. Kind of a pet peeve of mine. If this is the kind of level of stuff you want, then you're done. Happy trails. But if you want to keep this tasteful and add just a little bit more spice, pure 
unrefined spice. I got a little project for you. We're gonna take this idea and we're going to enhance it in the Fusion page. Now, if you've never used Fusion in Resolve, this can be kind of a, oh no, sort of moment. We're gonna keep this really simple and easy. I'm gonna explain everything we do. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to do something cool like this in Fusion too. Let's just go up to the media pool. I'm gonna right click and say new Fusion composition. We'll call this five seconds Fusion composition too. We'll say a logo animation. Just call it that for me. Create. Double click on that logo animation. And that's gonna open up the Fusion page. And right now, we're gonna be working down here in the nodes. And all of this stuff that we do down here, the thing that we're about to make, lives right here in this comp. Just like when we play with things on the timeline, it lives in the timeline here. Same kind of thing, it's just the Fusion version of it, all right? So in Fusion, we have our media out. So let's get started by going up and just dragging this little icon down here to this empty space. This is gonna make a background node. If you're not familiar with nodes, nodes are like a flow chart. Each one of these little boxes is a node. Each box has one job. The little gray square is the output of the node. So whatever this node is doing, if I take the gray square and drag it onto another node, that connects it to that node. Now, when I drag this onto the media out, this screen turns black because what I'm doing is this background node, it has one job and it's to make a black background. This media out node has one job and it is to render whatever we plug into this media out. Okay, so that's why we have a black screen. Let's take our logo, which is up here in our media pool, and I'm gonna drag it down just like I would drag it down to the timeline in the edit page, but I'm gonna drag it down here and that's going to make a node called media in. So that's just taking media and putting it into Fusion. And let me show you something cool about Fusion. Fusion has two viewers. So you should be able to split your screen kind of like this. If you can't, make sure to click on this button right here that changes in between the two screens and the single screen. And you should have a gray space right here and a black background right there. I can take whatever node I wanna look at in either of these viewers and I can just drag it into the viewer to view it. So I can take this media in and I'll just drag it up here like that. And now I can see what my node is doing. So this is kind of like taking a piece of our comp and just looking at it. So this is our logo. I'll just kind of move this over a little bit, get rid of our media pool so we have a little bit more room. And we're gonna take this logo and we're gonna put it over the background. To do that, we need a merge node. So we can grab this icon right here and drag it down. That's going to make a merge node. And I'm gonna drag it on top of this little connection and where it turns yellow and blue, I'm gonna let go of that. I can take this and wiggle it. And if I wiggle it and it's connected like this, that means that it's actually going through that merge node. Sometimes you can put a merge node right on top of something, but it's not really connected. So you always wanna wiggle it and make sure, okay? So now that we have that, this background's going into the yellow input, I can take this logo and plug that into the green input. And now it's put the logo on top of the black background. Whew. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, that's a lot of work to put one image over a background. And you're right. Usually that whole thing goes at about this speed. And then you move on. What I can do is I can take my logo and I can take the output of my logo and I can just drop it on the output of this background like this, this little white square, and that will automatically make a merge node and put it there where it's supposed to be and do all that stuff that we just did, but a lot faster, okay? So now you, now you can already work faster in Fusion, which is great. And the reason why we brought this into Fusion is because Fusion gives us a lot more control over kind of breaking up parts of this and animating it and kind of getting in and doing really fancy stuff. So here's my idea. I think I want to break up parts of this logo, like this L and this P and maybe the edge, into different pieces so that we can animate them separately. See, by default, we could move these around on the edit page or even in Fusion here as one thing. But if we want them to move independently of each other, we have to kind of break it up with a mask. So how do we do that? Well, here's what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is select this media in one, like this. Once you have it selected and there's that red outline around it, you can go here and pick any mask that you want to attach to it. And I think we should pick this middle mask right here. I'll click on that once, and that's going to add a polygon mask to this media. I can click a couple times and draw a little shape here. And what that's gonna do is basically just crop this to this shape. And I can move these little points around to make a good shape to kind of crop things to. So let's just select this L, great. So now I've just selected the L. Let's do the same thing for the P. First, let's rename this media in. I'll hit F2 to rename it. 
and I'll just call it logo underscore MI for media in so we don't forget that it's a media in node and I'll hit OK. And let's copy and paste this. Select it, Control C. I'll double click off so nothing is selected and then I'll hit Control V. That's going to put that there. And again, I can take the output of this, drag it on the output of that merge. And that's going to put that over again. So same thing, I can select this polygon node and I'll just kind of do a rough selection of where I kind of remember that P being. And then we can adjust it. Great, easy to do. So now we have the P selected and the L. I don't have to be very careful because right here is transparent in between the border and this P. I can just be somewhere in that black space. And now I have the P by itself and the L by itself. I can tell because I can select either of these merges and move these around like this. And those are separate. I'm gonna make sure to reset both of those merges. All right, so all they're doing is just putting that L over and that P over. Let's do one more thing. Let's select the outside of this. Let's copy and paste this logo again. Copy and paste. Take the output right here. And this time, I'm actually just going to drag one of these masks down, this rectangle mask. And I wanna fit this rectangle mask to be right on top of that rectangle, right here on this square. So it's kind of like in between that white. And now I can take this rectangle and plug it into my logo. And that's going to keep everything inside of this square. In fact, if I were to look at this logo right here, we can see that this is what that image looks like. It's just keeping it inside of the square, all right? Which is sort of what we want, but we actually just want the outside of the square to be a separate thing. And so with this rectangle, instead of having this solid, I'm gonna uncheck solid and then push up the border width. And what that's going to do is make a border on my mask. If I were just to show you the mask by itself, this is what this mask looks like. And so we have this border that we can make bigger or smaller. And so I'm gonna make this border small enough to where it just barely covers the edge here. And now I can use that as a mask itself. So I have this part, this part, and this part. And they're all three different parts. And now that I have this all split up, I can animate this in different ways. For instance, I could do something really simple, like I could select one of these merges and mess with this blend slider, and I can turn them off and on separately, right? So this one, turn it off and on separately, and so on. And so if you wanted to, you could just have one blend up and just go boop, 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 and kind of dissolve them on. The way that you would do that would be to set keyframes. And so let's say within about a second or so at 25 frames, we want these all to be turned on. So I can select this merge, go to blend right here, and I wanna click on this little icon right here, and that's going to turn red, and that means that it's setting a keyframe. So a keyframe is telling Fusion to be at a certain number at a certain time. So this blend is at one at 25 frames. Do the same thing for merge two, blend is at one, merge one, blend is at one. Now I can go back here to frame zero, and at frame zero, I want these all to be turned down. I can take this blend all the way down here on this first merge, and on the second merge, just turn the blend down. Because I already clicked the red keyframe earlier on each of these, I don't need to click it again. And now these all fade up at the same time. They all fade from zero frames to 25 frames. But why would I do that if I just spent all this time splitting these up? So let's go to our keyframes palette. That's right here. Click on that once. And it should show something like this. And I'm gonna go to this little button right here and go down to animated and then click on this little button right here to view all of our keyframes. So now we have everything that's animated so far here. I can twirl these down. And now we have these two little tick marks on each side, and this is the start and the end of that animation. And so I could have these a little bit shorter and kind of go one after another like this. And now when we play this back, see it kind of fades on each one. That already looks so cool. Look at that. That looks awesome. So now we have this little animation for our logo. So that's a cool thing that you can do in Fusion. I'm actually gonna reset all of these merges just by clicking on this little button up there. And now we don't have any animation, all right? What I wanna do is something a little bit fancier. Let's take these and kind of move them around. To do that, let's use a transform node. You can do this a bunch of different ways, but the best way to do it is with the transform. What we're gonna do is grab this icon right here. This is a transform node and I can drag this down in between the logo and the merge for each one of these. Let's just do this for the first two anyway, like that. Now, when we adjust this transform, I'll select it and move this around. See, we're just moving that P. So let's take this L and maybe at 25 frames, we'll set a keyframe for the center. We'll push this back at zero. 
And then I'll move this over like this. And I'll just move this all the way over here. So now we have this moving in like that. See what we're doing? That's cool, that's cool. But when it's all the way over here, I don't wanna see this part. I want this to be kind of cut off. So we can use a mask again. This time, instead of masking the L, let's mask the merge. Let's just take a rectangle here, plug this into the merge, and then we'll set that rectangle to be, I don't know, kind of over here, sort of in the middle of this leg right here. So now it looks like that L just comes out of that P. Let's do one more thing here. For this rectangle mask, for the outer border here, there are a couple of properties here that we can animate, including length. Look at this. We can animate that to make something really cool. So let's do it. Let's start at frame zero. We'll take the length all the way down. I think I'll move this position so it starts maybe up here in that corner. And then here at frame 25, we'll push the length all the way up. Remember, I added a keyframe there. That's why that's going to animate. So now we have this really cool animation happening because we have it split up, right? The one thing I want to do is ease these keyframes though, because when that L comes in, it just kind of stops really suddenly and it doesn't look as good. It's a lot better if something kind of comes in and then slows down before it stops. So to do that, we're going to go up to the spline panel right here. We're going to click spline and we're going to make sure that we select the transform that we're animating. So this one right here, transform one, and you should be able to find that transform and click on displacement right here. Transform one, displacement. By the way, if you have a whole bunch of stuff here, go to these three dots and say show only selected tool. That's gonna to help make this less insane. And then we'll click on this zoom to fit button so that we can see the graph. Select this last keyframe and then hit F on the keyboard. F is in flatten actually. And that's going to flatten out this graph of this animation. That means as this value approaches one, it's gonna start slowing down before it stops. So that means that our animation, look, it's gonna slow down before it stops. Look at that, look at how great that feels. And it's so easy. It's so easy to do something like this. So we have a course called Intro to Fusion and it teaches a lot of this stuff, but a lot more in depth. And it's so cool to see our students start to understand easing keyframes and what it looks like to have a really nice animation. And man, they're just making some fantastic stuff. It's so cool. So cool to see that. All right, so this is great. And let's say we really like this animation. We love it. We can do all kinds of stuff. Hopefully this uh, gives you a little taste of what you can do in Fusion, even for something pretty simple like this, these little graphics. But once you have that, what's cool is you can actually combine this with some of the other techniques that we were using earlier. So we can switch over to the edit page again. And instead of just this logo we have, Let's take this and just move that over to the side. Let's grab our logo animation that we made, drag this down, and this is gonna act just like a piece of footage. And we'll just trim that like this. See, we have this happening like that. Oh, beautiful. We can take this and we can scale that down. And now we can add that animation over our water. Isn't that cool? So there's one problem there. We have this black background. So let's actually, I'm gonna just, get rid of this real quick, double click on this again. And I'm gonna go back here to this background. We made a black background. We don't want it black, we want it see-through. So let's keep it black, but then take this alpha and turn that all the way down. Now we can see that checkerboard behind it. That means that it's see-through. So let's go back to the edit page, drag this logo animation down again. And now we have that see-through. Oh, so good. Take that zoom down like this. Good, we position it do all the things that we were doing before, but now we have this animation that looks really sick. Look at that. Oh, that looks so pro. Here's a couple other ideas I whipped up before this uh, tutorial. One of those is animated. This one has to do with cutting out that footage. This one's just a little bit more involved animation. Yeah, so there's so many cool things that you can do with just the combination of a little bit of fusion, playing around in the edit page, stacking things up in layers, putting effects on them. DaVinci Resolve is like the most 
powerful video editing program ever, man. If you didn't follow along, get that logo and follow along right here. And if you're like, Fusion seems seems pretty pretty cool. I think I might be into that. Well, we have we have a whole intro to Fusion course, which is available right there. And that's that's there too, if you want it. I hope you learned a lot. I hope this is really helpful. I hope it makes your YouTube intro life easy because this should be easy and fun. You know what I mean? Thanks for watching.